I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, I don't have to tell you, 2020 has been a bizarre year, right? I mean, strange. I mean, really weird things have happened. Uh, think back to the spring. Uh, Joe Exotic, Tiger King, became like a celebrity and a phenomenon. I mean, that was a, a bizarre show, but it, it, it was another one of the things that happened in 2020. I admit it. I watched the whole thing start to finish. I didn't miss it. Are you kidding me? So with uh, Joe Exotic and, and Tiger King, uh, then all of a sudden on the plate of, of the nation were, was this issue about big cats and the way they're treated and handled and all of that. And now all of a sudden it has trickled into some new uh, legislation. And Julie Grant has that story for us tonight. The Netflix docu-series Tiger King was one of 2020's biggest newsmakers. Tiger King was, you know, a personal nightmare for us because of the, the lies. That's Howard Baskin, the husband of Carol Baskin, the film's reluctant star. However, the huge silver linings have been massive public awareness that there are all these animals all over the country. The Baskins and others in the animal welfare movement hope public awareness will translate into support for federal oversight through a renewed push to pass the Big Cat Public Safety Act. The proposed law has two goals, ending private ownership of big cats and banning the practice of cub petting in zoos and sanctuaries. Tiger King, for all of its flaws, did provide an opportunity to further educate the public about the abuse that goes on at these cub petting facilities and also the potential public safety risks from these cubs then being dumped in someone's backyard or sold into the black market trade. The Big Cat Public Safety Act supporters include the country's leading law enforcement groups. They're the ones who have to deal with a dangerous wild animal when it gets out. And they know that this state patchwork of laws is simply not effective. But some animal lovers don't want to end private ownership of big cats. In my case, I have PTSD and my doctor has written that she feels that the tigers are beneficial to my psychological well-being. That's Carl Mitchell speaking to news station KTNV in 2018 after sheriff's deputies in Nevada accused him of failing to pay for permits for his 10 tigers. The dispute was resolved and today Mitchell operates Big Cat Encounters described as a private shelter not open to the public. The shelter's Facebook page urges people to contact their congressmen and tell them to vote no on the act. In 2018, Mitchell also came under fire for letting celebrities take pictures with his animals, a practice known as cub petting. What this means is that the public comes in and pays money to be able to touch lion or tiger babies. Mitchell denied exhibiting the animals for money, but said he accepts donations from visitors. The Big Cat Public Safety Act would end cub petting based on research that direct contact is bad for these wild animals. They're passed around in a big crowd of people. They are stressed out. They are frustrated. This is not a natural environment for them. Their immune systems are weak and they can be susceptible to diseases. The reason that's important is that drives all the breeding. These people will have 50 to 100 or more tigers in breeding pairs, living in horrible conditions, uh, pumping out cubs because you can only use the cubs for about three months and then there's no tracking of what happens to them. The U.S. House of Representatives passed the latest version of the act on the same day a tiger attacked a volunteer at the Baskins Big Cat Rescue Sanctuary. While the volunteer recovers, Howard Baskin says the incident shows why the act is needed. It just shows you that nobody should have these big cats as a private pet because even at a place that has intense safety protocols, it shows that these big cats are just dangerous and one slip up, one mistake, and it can be, you know, horrible and sometimes deadly. Such magnificent animals. Let's bring in Core TV anchor Julie Grant. Uh, Julie, uh, what's the status of the bill right now? 
So it's making some progress, Vinny. On December 3rd, the bill passed the House of Representatives. I have the numbers here. Passed by a vote of 272 to 114. It didn't make it to the Senate this session. But, however, its sponsors are pledging to reintroduce it next session. So some progress. And this bill's really been a long time in coming. The first time it was introduced, we're talking back in 2012. And incrementally, it's garnered more and more support. And now here we are with the most support it's ever seen. And uh, one step closer uh, to getting the point where it could potentially become new federal law. Yeah, all due to Tiger King. And, and you had an opportunity to speak mm -hmm. with Howard Baskin. Uh, pretty amazing. Um, so one of the questions that you asked him was, was about um, how about big cats that are currently, you know, held privately and living in people's homes. Let's take a listen to what he said uh, would happen in, in that instance. You may have seen the famous uh, incident where somebody in Harlem had a tiger in his apartment and the police are scaling the walls. And there's hundreds of these incidents that have occurred. There are incidents where there was a, a young tiger who, when firemen came to the building for a fire, leaped out of the building over the firemen. They managed to get into a squad car where it just tore up the squad car. There was a guy who, during a hurricane in Texas years ago, left a lion in a church. The church was the only safe place for people to go. And so people couldn't get into the church to be safe because there was a lion in the church. So, you know, there are all these incidents. So we're not gonna go take away everybody's cats. There would be no place for them to go. But the law would require that people register their cats. So at least first responders would know where they are and it would forbid breeding more or acquiring more. So if you registered the ones you've had, that's the only way the Fish and Wildlife Service would know if there were more. So that's what the bill does today. You know, um, and he added that these big cats, you know, over the course of the next decade or so, they'll slowly die off. I mean, it's, it's you know, part of the circle right. of life, right? Um, mm -hmm. But th that was a part, I, you know, I never really thought about it before. Law enforcement responding or, you know, first oh. responders coming, you know, during a catastrophe, and then all of a sudden, there's a tiger or a lion there. Yeah, right. Could you imagine, Vinny? I mean, we think of our first responders, we think occasionally they might get a call for like a little cat who's lost its way and gone up in a tree. We're not talking about these big, big cats. But essentially what this movement, this animal welfare movement is saying is we've got to take good care of the big cats too, just like our little house cats that we know and love. Some people are keeping these uh, magnificent animals as pets. And then law enforcement gets called and then they are stunned, not equipped to deal with it. All the, the problems and dangers that could cause, that's just one of those issues. And the other one, of course, is the breeding, uh, Vinny. In, in looking at the research in preparation for this report, I, I was wondering to myself, how, how, how big of a problem is this? Like how many people, I kept thinking it when I was like you, watching the Tiger King series and loving it. I'm thinking, well, how many people actually do this? How many people actually have these animals as pets? And surprisingly, there are more tigers in captivity in the United States than there are in the wild. And then so that's where the breeding happens. And so this isn't helping the tigers that are in the wild. It isn't helping them from um, potentially, you know, becoming extinct. We don't want that. We want them to grow and live and prosper and reproduce and keeping them in, in zoos and in homes just uh, isn't the proper place to help promote that. And um, we did talk to the Baskins, our, our field producer, Emanuela Grinberg, uh, was kind enough to do this interview with Howard Baskin. So I want to give her the credit for that and for putting together this report as she did. And she talked about how they got they, they received criticism. I mean, the Baskins got a lot of heat after Tiger King came out and people saying, well, wait, are you being hypocritical? Uh, you have cats in cages at your big cat rescue. What about you? So let's take a listen now together to Howard Baskin's response to that. One of the interesting things after Tiger King, we got just a torrent of all kinds of, you know, I mean, some of it was just obnoxious, sexually oriented, nasty, foul mouthed uh, stuff. But what was really interesting was a lot of people said they were mad because we had big cats in cages. And we, we, with those people would say, you know what? We totally agree with you. We don't want to have big cats in cages. You know, in Tiger King, you saw Joe Exotic and Doc Antle making these idiotic lies saying, oh, Carol Basket wants to be the last one standing, the only exhibiting. For years, we have said and published that our goal 
was to put ourselves out of business. You know, I'm 70 years old. I really did not intend to be working 60 plus hours a week at this age. And I can't wait for this problem to be solved and, and the sanctuary not to be needed. And so then to this, uh, that little portion we just saw, uh, Howard Baskin added that he thinks that zoos eventually, Vinny, are going to evolve into virtual reality experiences. And we're not going to see as many caged animals and we're going to see them living in the wild where they belong. And what zoos will do, because we're so advanced, take video that we've already got, turn it into 360 degree video so everyone can feel like they're experiencing the atmosphere of the wild where tigers and other large animals live and, and prosper. And so he said that at Big Cat Rescue, they've actually been sending out some cameras to folks that go into the wild and um, you know do whatever they're doing and take some some videos for them. So they're hoping to be part of that movement as well, which I thought was was pretty interesting. And uh, maybe there won't even be a need to uh, to go to the zoo. Maybe you could access it from your home at some point. Who knows? Who knows what all the virtual reality stuff will turn into in this movement. But it's got a lot of a lot of support. And at the end of the day, this is really to just stop people who aren't licensed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture from having these big cats. We want everything documented, which seems like a smart decision to protect those first responders for a number of reasons. Um, besides that, and also to restrict that contact with the public. I mean, the cup petting, it looks adorable, but it's not good for these animals. And if, if we're really concerned about what's best for them, that it needs to stop. Yeah, and, and it's a huge public safety thing, too. You know, I'd like to know if my oh. neighbor has tigers just in case, you know? So I'm like, all right, right I, I won't leave the meat outside. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I'll bring it in, put it that. down in the freezer, whatever you have to right. do. But good stuff. Julie Grant, thank you so much. Have a, uh, have a wonderful, you, wonderful weekend. Appreciate it.